This is an excerpt from the testimony of a South Carolina freeman before American Freedmen's Inquiry Commission. This took place in Beaufort, South Carolina, June 1863. The interviewer asked the interviewee, who was an ex-slave, they asked him, what do colored people want the government to do for them? The answer was, they would like to have land, four or five acres to a family. Question, how many here could manage and take care of land? Answer, a good many. I could take care of 15 acres and would not ask them to do anything for me. That's all they wanted. That's all free men and women wanted their own. They wanted their own land to take care of themselves. They wanted to be separated from the constant hostility that came with slavery. They wanted their own piece of paradise for themselves. Separated from you. What was the problem? I'll be back. Question. Suppose the government were to give you land, how long would it take to pay for it? Five years? Answer. I would not take five years. In two years, I would pay every cent. The people here would rather have the land than work for wages. I think it would be better to sort out the men and give land to those who have the faculty of supporting their families. Every able-bodied man can take care of himself if he has a mind to but there are bad men who have not the heart or will to do it question do you think the colored people would like better to have this land divided among themselves and live here alone or must they have white people to govern them answer they are obliged to have white people to administer the law the black people have a good deal of sense, but they do not know the law. If the government keep the masters away altogether, it would not do to leave the colored men here alone. Some white men must be here not as masters, but we must take the law by their word. And if we do not, we must be punished. If you take all the white men away, we are nothing. When I first read that part, I had to read it over because a part of me was like disturbed. And then, well, let me continue. And then I will, um, I will say what I felt. Let's continue. Probably what this is the the um, interview. He's he's still saying how he felt about black people needing to be you know governed probably with the children that are coming up no white men will not be needed they are learning to read and write some are learning lawyers some are learning doctor and some learn minister and reading books and newspapers they can understand the law but the old generation cannot understand it it makes no difference how sensible they are they are blind and it wants white men for the present to direct them after five years they will take care of themselves this generation cannot do it like i said when i first read it i had to reread it because i was like god did you really say that but then i understood what he meant and it goes back to the the thing i've said in multiple videos that slaves were intentionally dummy down they were made to be docile and not know anything but how to work and it was it was intentional you know they didn't want 
You know how people like to take advantage of people who don't know too much? That's what they wanted. They, they didn't like the slaves that, you know, spoke their mind, that knew how to read. They didn't like that. They, you know, they made sure to, to you know, let it be known. We don't need you reading, niggers. And we need you to get out in them fields. Because when you when they when they had the ability to read, they were had the ability to discover what was really going on and they didn't you know, they didn't want them to know that. Let's continue. In eighteen sixty five, a man by the name of Garrison Fraser was asked whether they preferred he was a black man, ex slave. He was asked whether black people preferred to live separately or among whites. Fraser replied I would prefer to live by ourselves for there is a prejudice against us that would not permit for our peace, prosperity, and harmony. He and his fellows understood that salvation lay in owning their own land and having independence. That's not working for us. So it's time for us to action, action, action. She teamed up with her friend Ashley and 17 other families to buy more than 96 acres near Toomsboro, Georgia. That's about two hours outside of Atlanta. This is our answer to breaking generational curses. Their inspiration was Black Wall Street, a self-sustaining black community in Tulsa, Oklahoma back in the 1920s. The friends wanted to create a place to build generational wealth that can be a safe haven for other black families. We're planning on recycling our black dollars between the 20 or excuse me the 19 families that are a part of our planning on recycling our black dollar between the 20 or excuse me the 19 families that are a part of our it bothers me so much that all they asked for was land they wanted to live separated they wanted to have their own and it was given to them and taken away. And then when they found ways to build their own, it was destroyed. I'm telling you, it's, the, it's God that has kept black people from, you know. Because somebody said that if black people were revengeful, I can't remember how they said it. But it was, a, I don't know if it was a short, YouTube short on, on or was it on TikTok. They were like, basically, if black people were violent. As you know, this country likes to paint that picture. They like to project, make it appear there wouldn't be any white people. And I saw an interview where uh, it was in a '68. This man was in a white man was interviewing uh, Malcolm X. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to insert the video. To <laughs> yeah, let me let 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 Malcolm X say it. He, he can say it better than me because he said it himself. In that regard, what's interesting is that uh, members of the Nation of Islam have not used violence even when uh, black Americans were attacked. Uh, how do you account for this? D does this in any way contradict uh, some of the basic premises of your movement? I don't know how you mean. Well, you maintain for example, that, that you will not or that you should not use violence unless you are attacked by the white man. And I think we can note in the last several years, certainly, dozens and dozens and dozens of instances in which Negroes have been uh, attacked, uh, killed in some instances. You mean in these demonstrations? In these demonstrations and, and the bombings, for example, recently in Birmingham where they killed four little Negro girls. And what interests me is the fact is, is that the Nation of Islam has not done anything to retaliate. I think you should be happy. <laughs> uh. Okay, I would like to say thank you. Thank you guys for returning. Those who have returned, thank you for the new subscribers. Uh, subscribers, please, new subscribers and old, if you haven't pressed the notification bell, please do so, so you will be alerted uh, when we publish videos. So let's go on. I this story it really touched my heart. You when I heard that 19 families came together and bought acreages, you would have thought I bought it or I was a part of the 19 families. That's how excited I was for them because I can only imagine how it feels to be on land that you own away from people who have caused you and generations before you trouble. Let's get into the article. One of the 
founders of the acreage that, you know, includes the 19 families, this is what she said. She said, I sought counseling from a black therapist and it helped. It helped me to realize that what we as black people are suffering from is racial trauma. We're dealing with systemic racism. The title of the um, ABC News article that was written in 2020 when they said it was a reckoning happening. They don't even know what a reckoning is. If they thought 2020 was a reckoning, they they don't know what a reckoning is. Because a reckoning would end with like the Egyptians and the Hebrews when you know god just terrorized the egyptians and they basically kicked the hebrews out and and hebrews left with wealth that's a reckoning but the only thing is we're not leaving this country trust 19 black families have pooled their money to buy nearly 97 acres of land for now the small portion of land known as freedom georgia is just a campground on red clay under the hot sun but for the black americans who are moving here it is a dream so far about 19 families most of whom are from georgia have pooled their money to buy the nearly 97 acres of land in wilkinson county which is located about two hours south of atlanta it's their escape they said from the everyday racism that feels like a part of life in the united states Racism is palpable. Let's continue. The final push to make the move came this summer after seeing images of black Americans like Jacob Blake in Wisconsin and Ahmad Avery in Georgia being gunned down by white police officers and white neighbors. Many of them said, we came together and we said, you know what? We don't like being slaughtered in the streets. We don't like our children being there being at the mercy of some psychopath that wants to tackle us and arrest us and bang our heads and we don't want that somehow about we just came together and build our own said dr tabitha ball a licensed clinical psychologist from atlanta suburbs renee walters and ashley scott started the campaign to buy freedom after walters saw a viral post about buying a town for the price of a New York apartment. So when I looked at it, I saw I had all these partials and acres. I called my friend, Ashley, who is one of the most amazing realtors in Atlanta, and said, sis, we have to go, Walter said. The people in Freedom include a range of professionals, from doctors to real estate agents. Still, the group needs to build roads and establish running water and electricity before it can start building homes. We're not preaching separation. We're not preaching segregation. We no. we just want to be safe. That's it, Ball said. Is that is that too much to ask for, just to be safe and happy and healthy? That's what this is about. And let me say something right quick before anyone come in and say, oh, my God, you're talking about you want to be safe. Well, what about all the black people killing themselves? Um, let me remind you, those who want to know, go check out the Kerner Report video I put up. And a lot of that violence and frustration comes from racism. It stems from racism, which is oppressive. And oppression brings pain. It brings trouble. It brings all agony. It, it, it makes one turn against one another. It makes one want to not even... They don't want to associate with people who look like them. That's what oppression and racism does. So before you want to start pointing a finger, pointing a finger at what black people do to each other, let's talk about what you've done to black people to create this trouble in our community that has persisted for hundreds of years. Stop trying to remove yourself from the troubles of the black community in the black community. Stop doing it. Because pretty soon you're going to have to deal with it, whether you want to or not. Let's continue. This is not the first time that people who felt persecuted or unwanted have pulled up stakes to settle somewhere new. Immigrants from Ireland, Italy, Germany all fled Europe and moved to the United States around the turn of the 20th century in the hopes of building better lives and, and created ethnic communities here. Yeah, they had the ability to do that. 
without, you know, troubles. Let's continue. Conservative Dutch communities left the motherland in the mid 1800s to set up Holland, Michigan. To this day, its tulip festival and iconic windmills are our mainstays. But those are examples of Americans who feel they can walk freely in this country, which for many black Americans is still not the case today. The Browns are one of many black families from across the country that came to see freedom for themselves during an event that was held over the Labor Day weekend. They drove down to freedom from their home in Chicago. I think that if we want to feel safe and secure and be able to honor our culture, our heritage and plan for our children and not have to worry about what happens to them when they leave out the door, we have to not necessarily segregate, but we have our own space. Marissa Brown said there are so many communities that have their own space and it's not that we're anti anything. We have to be pro black love and black love matters black community matters black power matters historian kendra tara field an associate professor of history at tufts university in massachusetts underlines that black americans have tried to set up their own communities like freedom before she said the reason they've done this has been to escape racial violence and pointed to examples in nicodemus kansas eatonville florida and mound bayou mississippi she said all these black communities sprung up at times when black americans were lynched and hung from trees in their neighborhoods and for what i was told in research it's still happening but you know people don't really want to talk about it so i also wanted to get an update this that like as i said what i just read was published in 2020 so i searched for an update because i wanted to see what was going on and this update was published in 2023 let's go on it was unveiled in 2020 as a bold idea for creating economic mobility in the black community back in 2020 nearly 20 black georgia families announced a bold plan to help fight inequities that were at the heart of many of the racial justice protests that had swept through the country that year. The 19 households brought nearly 100 acres near Toomsboro, Georgia to create a self-sustaining new black town. They wanted to call it Freedom Georgia, launching the Freedom Georgia initiative. So three years later, how's it going? As I said, this article was published in 23 last year. The project is still making progress with this Instagram account sharing just in the past couple of months plans for a tiny house build out on the land as well as more things coming down the pipeline with our agricultural pursuits and digital citizenship. The website is still also soliciting offers on custom home builds on the land. Last year, an Instagram post noted they had sold three of 13 lots in an initial phase advertising investment slots in the community. The Freedom Georgia Initiative was established out of an extreme sense of urgency to create a thriving safe haven for black families in the midst of racial trauma, a global pandemic and economic instabilities across the United States of America brought on by COVID-19, the site notes. Our vision is to develop our vast resource, rich 502 acres of land just outside Tom Toomsboro, Georgia for the establishment of an innovative community for environmentally sustainable living health and wellness agricultural and economic development arts of culture for generations to come last year scott was invited to a symposium at georgia state capitol to talk about the project as a realtor and a co-founder of a community development project to build a city called freedom georgia I have the honor to share my testimony about bringing 19 black families together to buy land and develop it with an Afro future in mind. 
this might seem like an old story but it's still relevant she posted in may 2022 we know the world is shifting and changing at rapid pace and it's our purpose to be responsible and accountable to building a better future for black families and our allies our mission is deeply rooted in the idea that living substantially practicing cooperative economics and creating laws that support equality will create a replicable model that ultimately benefits all people so as i said i was really um interested in finding out what happened to them you know after they purchased the land because i remember when i when the article was first pu published in 2020 um there was a certain group of people who were upset i can't remember the article i didn't even bother to look it up because i just really didn't care but yeah they were upset that these um this this 19 families 19 black families came together and bought some acreage they were upset about it i didn't even research it to find out what they was upset about because anytime black people move forward to do what we know we can do you know but other groups like to you know project on us you know you're gonna always have problems like this thing with reparations you have people coming out the woodworks have something to say but yet your family wasn't enslaved you know in this land and still dealing with the repercussions of slavery today but you have so much to say though you know let it let it have been your family and, and let's see how quiet you would be <laughs> so you know they were upset about it and it was like who cares they're upset all the time it seemed like they get more upset when when it looks like black people are trying to do something to better themselves you know because let them tell it we don't want to better ourselves the whole group of us don't want to better ourselves which is absolutely asinine and i don't know how many parents taught people that generalization is not something you're supposed to do but it you know when it comes to us they always break the rules right generalize they generalize us all the time all the time so i am so happy for these people and i will look for updates and i'll probably go and follow them on instagram and i will leave uh, in the description i will add their instagram page to um the description just in case you guys are interested in following them so yes that's all i wanted to share i just wanted i was thinking about them for some time now and i stumbled across these articles a couple of months ago i'm just now getting to the video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed the video check out the other videos i'm sure you'll find something you enjoy also thank you for subscribing commenting liking and sharing it helps a channel grow it really does thank you again be safe enjoy your weekend and i'll see you in the next video